Welcome to the Introduction to Geographic Information Systems and Science Lecture Series developed by the Quinney College of Natural Resources at Utah State University. Discussion topics for this lecture include basic map elements, cartography, map types, and scale. The examples here on the left show U.S. colleges and universities offering courses in geography by state, and on the right we have a Hispanic population as percent of the whole population. Here's an excellent example of a very complex series of data displayed in a proportional symbol map. So this map is showing net generation of electricity, coal, and natural gas. So you can note that there are yellow and blue symbols along with an interval display of net generation of electricity. Take just a minute to look at this map to get a good feel for what the author is trying to display. The next type of map is a flow map. Flow maps show linear movement between places. Line width is proportional to the quantity of movement. In the example on the right, you can see coming from Texas, total truck flows from the various port cities. You can see that on the routes that have the most truck flow leaving those port cities, they're very thick. And you can see how that arterial network distributes itself across the lower 48 states and into Canada. The last type of map or data display that we'll discuss are cartograms. Cartograms are areas that are drawn proportional to the data that they represent. An advantage to cartograms is that there's no distortion due to the classification method and it's very easy to convey the message. However, the disadvantage is that there is distortion to geographic properties such as distance, area, shape, and location. So the example here you can see number of Walmarts, McDonald's, and Starbucks proportional to the size and shape of the state they represent. An understandable map has several good elements of design. Well-produced maps have good visual balance. They focus attention on what's important. They have visual contrast and hierarchy. They have proper text placement and they also use color appropriately. Visual balance is a critical component of map design. Arranging the elements on the map is an important process that helps divide up the space so that the user can better look and understand the main topic quickly. The user generally focuses attention not in the geometric center but slightly above the geometric center of the page. So you want to design around what we call the optical center rather than that geometric center. Eye movement passes from left to right with the focus, field, and fringe spaces needing to be taken into account. Visual contrast is incredibly important because most important objects should be placed with the greatest contrast. Less important elements should be placed with less contrast. Ensuring proper text use and placement is critical to understanding a map. Labels inside aerial features can be letter spaced or occupy that feature entirely. Labels outside the features are usually not letter spaced and are usually well placed out of the way but still near the object that they represent. Note that text scale should be appropriate for the map and the feature scale and labels may be used repeated for clarity but not overly so. An important topic that needs to be carefully considered is the use of color. Color use is another aspect of map creation that needs to be given careful consideration. Computers allow us to create millions of colors and the human eye can generally distinguish nearly 10 million colors but not at the same time. Too many colors can cause confusion as you can see in this land cover map. A well-designed map will use the appropriate number of colors for the size and scale of the map that is being displayed. So some basic principles of map design that you should keep in mind is what is the purpose of your map? What's the reality of the information you're showing? What data is really available? What is the map scale? What audience are you focusing on? Are there any conditions of use? And what is the technical use of the map? No GIS class is complete without discussing the meanings of scale. The term scale has been assigned different meanings by different users, including scientists, cartographers, and general users. Scale can represent detail, extent, or the map scale of the map itself. So looking at this example, we're going to talk about scale and spatial resolution. Data are fine scaled if they include more records of small objects or high spatial resolution. Data are coarse scaled if they include fewer records or larger objects or low spatial resolution. 
keep an eye on the example on the right. We're going to move from a data that is fine scaled to data that is coarse scaled. Starting with this first image representing the USU Logan main campus at about a half meter pixel resolution. Now I've moved through one slide and you can't tell that much has changed. If we move through a second slide you can start to see that our pixel resolution begins to change visibly. We start to lose some of that fine detail and we can say that our data is becoming more coarsely scaled. As I move into another resolution, a 10 meter pixel value, you can see that we become even more coarsely scaled and we start to lose the definition of the buildings, the roads, and so on. But we can still make out some of the detail necessary to interpret the image. Again, moving to a 30 meter pixel resolution, we begin to lose all definition of buildings. Those of you familiar with the USU campus may be able to make out where the quad would be or maybe Highway 89, but generally speaking, this is very coarsely scaled and we have a hard time really representing anything in this image. And lastly, moving into something more along the lines of 250 meter resolution, we have a significant reduction if not a complete reduction in understanding of the image. Scale can also represent geographic extent. Projects, maps, and data sets that cover a large geographic extent are considered large scale. Those projects and maps or data sets that cover a small geographic extent are considered small scale. A map scale is the ratio or relationship between a distance or area on a map and the corresponding distance or area on the ground. Scale is represented as a distance conversion in one of three ways on a map. It can be represented as a graphic scale, a verbal scale, or a representative fraction. Graphical map scales are elements that are placed on the map that represent the scale of the map. Graphical scales can be enlarged and reduced and still retain meaning to that map. It's important to remember that graphical scales may be culture bound, meaning that you need to understand your audience and whether or not they understand say miles versus kilometers or meters versus feet. A map verbal scale on the other hand is a scale that's expressed as a verbal statement on a map and is generally written in standard local terms. Or it can be a term that you verbally transmit to someone in an email or over the phone or through some other type of communication. An example of this is one inch equals one mile or one centimeter equals one kilometer. They are simple to understand and express, however it's difficult to utilize without a ruler in hand. Finally, representative fractions are the ratio of a distance on the map to, to the equivalent distance measured on the ground. As an example, 1 to 24,000, such as the common USGS topographic map, 1 to 63, 360, or 1 to 100,000. The representative fraction is generally noted as being unitless thereby making it simple to understand and is not culture bound. Here's an example of several common scales. Note that increasing map detail is near the top of the slide, whereas decreasing map detail, however increase area covered, is towards the bottom. A 7.5 minute series, such as a USGS 1 to 24,000 map, has significantly more detail then a map at 1 to 250,000 towards the bottom of the slide. It's important to keep in mind small scale versus large scale. A large denominator gives a small fraction resulting in a small scale or a less detailed map showing a larger area. A small denominator gives a large fraction resulting in a large scale, more detailed map showing a smaller area.